Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It is Monday, Memorial Day, 2020. Hope everybody is having a great Memorial Day, and thank you for all the military, past and present, for protecting us and keeping us safe. I do appreciate it. My father was in World War II on an aircraft carrier. So uh, thank you so much. Hey, um, I'm going to tell you what I sold on eBay this week, or uh, last week. <laughs> Not this week. We're not even there yet. And uh, give you some tips and tricks. And if you like what you see, please like the video and please subscribe to my channel. Here it is right here. Um, got a good number of bit of subscribers doing a lot of um, eBay videos. Also doing some uh, Chromebook videos. I'm a huge uh, Chromebook user. I love Chromebooks. Chromebooks are not Macs or PCs. They run off the Chrome OS operating system, which is a little different than everything else. But uh, they're getting better and better with the... Uh, implementation of a, uh, a Linux, you can run a lot of uh, Windows uh, stuff just about now. It's pretty, pretty cool. All right, guys, let's get started here. I had a pretty good week. I'm going to go over what I sold from uh, May. Let me make sure I get these dates straight here. Uh, May 18th, 2020 to May 24th, 2020. Uh, picked up a, a new consignment client. I do a lot of consignment. But most of the stuff you're going to see here uh, I got either for free, either people give me stuff, got it out of a dumpster or trash, and I'll tell you what I've, how I got the item as we go through, and um, or either under consignment. I love doing consignment. Consignment is not for everyone. Um, it's for me. I love it a lot. Uh, it, it just make sure you get good clients, clients that understand this pen is worth what the pen is worth. Doesn't matter who used it. Doesn't matter if grandpa used it for 20 years every day, writing his notes while he had his coffee. It's still worth whatever market value is. Make sure you tell people market value is what you sell things at, whatever the market value is. Once you find good people, it's a great way to build an online uh, eBay business. No thrifting, no garage selling, stuff like that. You just grab a bunch of items from people and start selling them. And I do a 50-50 split. Uh, before fees and sometimes I split the fees. Sometimes I let the buyer take the, the whole fee. It all depends the situation, what the item is and what's going on. All right, well, let's get started so you guys can go on with your day. Got a good number of items here. Most of these items uh, are not a huge dollar sales. Um, I did make uh, good money on one consignment item and I'll show you that. And I sold two other consignment items from the same person today. And we'll talk about them next week. Uh, this is an item I got for free. I parked out a lot of items. I get dishwashers and other appliances on Craigslist and Facebook uh, for free. I have not paid for any appliances yet. I would be glad to pay a little bit for an appliance. But um, as long as I get it for free, that's cool. Did not make a lot of money off of this. This was basically, this is the filter at the bottom of the dishwasher. Open the door. Pull the bottom rack out, and it's right there. You just unscrew it, take it out. I did clean this up. I sold three of these, or two of these already. I see two sold. I do have several others. Did not make a lot of money on this. Got the dishwasher for free. Sold. I probably sold the racks out of this thing. Probably made about 60 bucks for the two racks together, maybe 80 bucks. I'd have to really go back and look at my records. I don't know if I sold the control board out of this uh, unit or not. If I did, that could be another uh, 60, 40, 50 bucks just for the control unit itself. I am working on a course for parking out dishwashers. I am just about done it. It's in the uh, editing phase right now, getting prepped for, uh, I'm a uh, speaker at the Ecom Chicago event in October, obviously in Chicago, and I'm hoping that event goes on. I'm creating that uh, course for that event. And once I get that going, I will offer that to you guys. It will be reasonably priced. Um, so I didn't make a whole lot of money off of this. Went out first class, obviously. Probably made three bucks, maybe three fifty. Eh, quick chip. And I think I wrapped it in bubble wrap, put it in a poly envelope, and it's gone. I am having a huge problem, and a lot of eBay people are, of the post office. Delaying shipping. Uh, I would say I'm having a huge problem with it. I'm having uh, some issues with it. I've got one item that is just lost. Uh, I had an item two months ago that was lost, finally got to the destination. People are getting very angry. 
If you have this problem, I recommend you either call eBay or get on Facebook and get on eBay for business and message them. That is the best way to contact eBay support. That's how I do it. It may take a, a couple hours, it may take a day, but once they make that connection with you, it's pretty quick and it, and, and it gets resolved really uh, fast. Every time I have a problem with slow shipping, if somebody opens up a case and says, did not get their item, I always contact uh, eBay for business on Facebook and let them know what's going on. So I'm uh, just covering myself. All right, that's uh, one low earning item. Uh, this is a consignment item. I'm doing a bunch of consignment for a uh, repair shop. One town over, a uh, guy is uh, retired and his son asked me if I could sell a bunch of stuff. Um, I got a lot of stuff. I've got shelves and shelves and two, three car loads, van loads of stuff. And I'm not real happy with some of the parts. Some of the parts uh, don't look like they're gonna go for a lot of money. I'm having trouble looking, finding the part numbers. Um, I need to look at this more in some of these parts. There's a lot of money in some of these parts, but I just can't figure out where the money is in the parts. But uh, manuals have been doing very, very well. Again, it's a 50-50 split. So what I make uh, 16 bucks off of this, which is fine. Went media mail. Right into an. I, what I do with these manuals first is I wrap them in plastic, like um, like a Saran wrap, uh, not a brand name, but I basically you get a big that big roll you get at Costco or Sam's or your warehouse club. It's like 15 bucks. It's got enough enough wrap food wrap in there to last you a lifetime. I just roll it in that, then I put it in a uh, poly envelope or a plastic envelope, and ship it out in media mail. And he got it already. He's thrilled. I am very uh, clear on, might have some, I always take pictures of the edges, and I'm very, let me very go in my pictures, try my best with the pictures, show a picture of the inside. This book was in really, really good shape. Let me very quickly go over how I do a listing. Uh, this is old news for most people here. Get a cup of coffee and come back. <laughs> um, Basically the title, I just am worried about keywords. I'm not worried about grammar. I try my best not to use any special characters. There's one there. I will tell you and I'll preach this in my classes and in my personal trainings, don't use any special characters. And there'll always be a student that comes back to me a day later, a week later and says, man, I saw a lot of listings with special characters in them and the items are selling. I know it's not best practice to use special characters. I prefer not to use special characters because what happens is every day or every night, eBay uploads your listings to Google Shopping. And Google goes through this listing and goes, okay, VW, Volkswagen, industry, did okay, I'm gonna put this on Google Shopping. And let's say this was a special character of like an ampersand or um, a pound sign or whatever you wanna call it. And that sign, it stops and it gets kicked out and it doesn't get uploaded to Google Shopping. So your best to try not to use uh, special characters um, I always, when I'm selling something used, I always use a condition description. And I will show you that below because it shows up twice in the listing where you're looking at it. I try and price the item fairly. I try and keep it to what other people are selling it for. Since this is a consignment item, I try not to do free shipping on consignment items because it makes the matrix much more complicated with, with trying to figure out the earnings and, and, and the cost and everything else. So um, I try not to do free shipping. When I'm listing an item, I try and do whatever most of the items have sold already. If they're doing free shipping, I'll do free shipping except if it's a consignment item. If it's a real good item and it's a consignment item and I know it'll sell quick and I know both of us will make a lot of money, I will do free shipping and I'll just calculate. I'll figure that in the, uh, the cost of the breakdown. Um, shipping is fair. Um, it went up like $3.99. I have no problem making money on shipping. I know many sellers hate that. I have no problem with it. My time, my energy, my supplies, whether I buy the envelopes, whether I buy the bubble wrap, I get most of mine bubble wrap and packing materials for free, either from dumpsters, companies, people calling me. I buy my envelopes, but that's about it. I have no problem making some money on shipping. I have no problem making a lot of money on shipping sometimes. It all depends. You're spending your time, your energy to ship the item. I do not charge a handling fee. Think of it as a handling fee when you see something on TV. Showed you the pictures. I do my best to try and take it on a white background if I can. 
eBay likes white background. Google Shopping loves white background. If you can't do it all on white background, do the first one on a white background. And there is in the eBay app on the Android and Apple, there is a something, I forget what they call it. You can turn the background to the first picture white, which is great. Um, what am I using here? I'm using a dollar store uh, whiteboard. Basically, I have this thing laying on. Here is the condition description, uh, basically telling you what it is and all this other stuff. You want to try and use a condition description if you can. It will protect you in a return or any issue with eBay because you're stating the condition of the item right up front. Item specifics are very, very important. This is how people, this is what the searches are based on. When you're creating item specifics, this. Um, you'll notice the pull down menu. Try and pick one of those from the pull down menu um, because then you, um, <clears throat> that's millions of people have searched on them that way. You can even create your own item specifics. I always do. I try and put, like, even if it's a dirty manual, I would say item notes, number one, manual is dirty or pages torn or whatever. Uh, my uh, description is basically a copy and paste of that. First line is the title, and then it's a copy and paste of the uh, condition description. Let's go to shipping. I'm using Global Shipping Program, eBay's version of international shipping. All I have to do is get this pen to Kentucky if I sell it internationally to eBay's location down there, and they handle it from there as long as this pen is packed properly and shipped properly, and they get it down there. I am out of the picture after that. It will open the item up sometimes and check. Uh, I've heard nightmare stories about people not liking global shipping. Uh, they say buyers are charged more, taxes. I have no idea. I think sometimes they're right. But um, it, uh, it, it works for me. It makes shipping a lot easier, international shipping for me a lot easier. I don't have to worry about doing all that paperwork. And it's handled. My uh, shipping uh, services is 99% of the time. Economy shipping, I picked that because that allows me to ship out any option eBay offers. Post Office FedEx, Post Office Express, Post Office Priority, Post Office Flat Rate Box, FedEx Home, FedEx Smart Post, which is a collaboration between the Post Office and FedEx, um, gives me all the options. I should have another option out there that has priority. I'm probably losing sales on that. I keep on forgetting to add that onto my listings. Um, because people see the five to nine days, but if you ever look at my feedbacks, 90% of them say, quit shipping, got it fast, thank you so much. My returns are minimum 30 days. That's the minimum eBay allows. New sellers, please don't let that scare you. I was flipping out when I first had to do that, but knock on wood, I don't get too many returns. I am very clear in my items how I'm selling or something wrong with them. And I take PayPal. All right, let's go to the next item. Get the show on the road. Uh, cigar boxes. I know you guys told the story a thousand times. I go to a cigar store or wine store. My vice is cigars. I don't smoke a whole lot of them, but I do smoke a few a week. And I always grab the cigar boxes that are left. Most of the time, these are free. Some wine and cigar stores charge for these. I would not pay any more than a dollar for a cigar box, and that would be a max. But if I get them for free, remember, again, I'm into getting stuff for free. I know this is not a high dollar item. I get the item, the pen, the cigar box, get my cigars at the checkout. I look over and ooh, cigar boxes. I grab them. I know which ones to get right now because I know which ones to sell pretty good. Um, if you can group these into two or three uh, or three or four, I've sold lots of four of these for uh, $30 free shipping. So I'm making like 20 some dollars on four cigar boxes that I got for nothing. This one, I didn't make a whole lot of money. Probably made about 750, maybe 650 on this, but again, Free item, take it home. I've already got a listing for it, so similar. Sold it within a day or two, went into a poly envelope, and I wrapped some brown paper that I got from another item I ordered, which was great. Love reusing packing materials. Love it. Love when you get that big box from Amazon, and you order a pen, and it comes in this huge box with all that packing material, and I'll use that stuff up in a heartbeat. But um, I love doing this kind of stuff. It's free, free money, quick money. And not a whole lot of money, but it is quick money. All right, let's uh, go to the next one. Another cigar box. This one's $16. This, unfortunately, went out to California. So I got taken on shipping on this one a little bit. 
but I probably I think I made about eight seven seven fifty eight dollars on this. Um, if you do your keywords right and and everything, so I've got two more out here that did not sell. This one I just I listed and it sold that day, and I have two other ones that are still sitting out there. I need to look at them. These do sell well. Um, I always ask people, what do you do with these cigar boxes? <clears throat> A lot of people use them for. Um, they make musical instruments out of them, believe it or not. Guitars I've seen made out of cigar boxes. People use them for marble collections. Um, people use them for other things to collect things in. So um, I always ask, what, what are you using a cigar box for? Again, made about eight fifty on that, which isn't bad for something free. Grab it, list it. Another item I got for free, I was getting uh, packing material out of a furniture store dumpster a couple Saturdays ago. And I went to another dumpster just out of a whim. And I went, I wonder what's in here. And there was a microwave in there, and I went, oh, man. Grab that tray out of there, and I'll sell it. Well, I had to pull the microwave out a little bit. Sort of broke the door a little bit. And um, got the tray out. Took me a week to list it because I forgot about it. <laughs> hey, I'm being open. And sold it within two days, $29. I actually had a thin box. I wrapped this up with bubble wrap and put it in a thin box. A lot of times, I will use a pool noodle, a swim noodle, pool swim noodle, whatever you call them. I think I got a video on that, or I'll have to make one. Basically, wrap the pool noodle around it, measure it, cut the pool noodle in whatever length, slip the pool noodle, wrap the pool noodle around the edges of the of the microwave uh, tray, tape the end, throw it out in a box, or you can probably throw it out in a big envelope, and it should be fine. I don't think it's going to be breaking anywhere, especially if you put it in a box. Um, the key here with any of these parts is really going out and doing your, your work out on Google. So what I did was I pulled this tray out, then I flipped a mark, I flipped a microwave up, so I could take a picture of the parts tag, the model number tag right there. Now, that is key. I've got the part, and now I have the, the picture of the tag. So now I can go out to Google, and I can look it up, and I can do uh, get a parts breakdown just by typing in, the model number, parts breakdown, and usually you'll find a parts breakdown, and then you'll get all the other part numbers that's associated with that part. That's what you want. That is your golden ticket right there. All the different part numbers and other brands, it, it may fit. Do I have any items specifics I added in here? No, I do not. 28 bucks, probably made about 20, 20 bucks, maybe 19, maybe $21 on this item. For free. Took me all of probably about two minutes to get it, uh, two minutes to list it, and it's gone. Dishwasher rack. This rack I sold twice. This is the second time I've sold it. Every one of my parts listings, I always have this. We're not responsible for item not fitting. I will not pay for this item to be shipped back. The person bought it last time, had to ship it back. Cost me uh, $29 to ship it to them. They probably paid more than that to ship it back to me. I will not pay for shipping for a part because the buyer's not paying attention. I have it well listed, well listed in my, um, or well written in my listing. Please make sure the part fits your clients. We're not responsible for a part not fitting. Please only buy if part number matches. I can't be more clear than that. Um, I don't get too many returns on parts. If the part's real small and they want to return it, I usually just say just keep it. It's not worth it. So let's hope this thing fits this person's dishwasher. This is a weird, this is, um, I always tell people, grab the Bosch dishwashers there, the big money ones. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, sometimes they're not. There are some really weird, part, uh, really weird models that probably didn't do too well out there on the market, and this is one of them. Usually on a regular Bosch dishwasher rack, it, it, it's a popular one, I can get 90 plus shipping or i can get 90 with free shipping and i can put 60 70 bucks in my pocket easily with some of the racks like i said i'm creating that course i'm almost done this in the editing phase right now hopefully it'll be done in a couple of weeks but there's a lot of money in dishwasher racks the only problem with these is that they take up a lot of room so if you have a room it's great if you don't i would maybe look at something else parting out something else people ask me how do you ship something like this very easily, I go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get a big box, or I just have a big box somewhere. I usually get a heavy-duty box at one of those stores. I get a medium box, cut it open, flip it inside out, 
lay the dishwasher rack on it, and then just start folding it over, folding it over, cutting, and then just folding and cutting the ends like you're wrapping a gift at Christmas time. Folding, cutting, cutting. You're going to use a lot of tape. That is the best way. I have never had a problem with the racks at all. I used to put them in a bigger box, with bubble wrap and paper and all this other stuff. And I thought, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of money on my end. Uh, I don't need to do that. So there you go. And it's a winner. I think I may have sold two of these racks this week. I don't know. Okay, let me tell you about this item here. This is a consignment item. I just picked up this great consignment client last week. He gave me this. Something else. I can't remember. <laughs> He gave me a ton of other stuff just today on Memorial Day. Um, I saw this and I went, "This is worth something." It's from the it's it's from England. This is worth. I love selling vintage stereo equipment. I love 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 selling vintage stereo equipment. It's one of my niches, and I just have a knack for. I don't know why these pictures are not showing up like this. I think eBay is just on the fritz today. Um, so this took a lot of research, I'll be honest with you. I probably spent about a half an hour researching this. I looked on eBay. There were none. Let's make this bigger. It is some kind of, I don't even know, some kind of amplifier. Looked on eBay. Did Google searches on this whole name. Some came up. Then I went, hmm. What if I did Google searches on quad QC preamplifier? Bingo. I found them. There were Pinterest. Uh, post. Then I found a website that had information on it. And I got most of the information from there, but I stated right at the top before I listed all the information, hey, this info is from this website, so I don't get in any trouble. Um, and I priced it, I was going to price this at $200, buy it now or best offer. Then I thought, no, let me do $100 auction. And I thought, no. The one thing with auctions is you know, sometimes you can make a lot of money on an auction, but then sometimes people don't buy the item. Like, okay, great, they want it, and then they don't buy it. And you have to send them an invoice, and then you got to wait for them to pay. Even if they're going to pay for it, you got to wait for them to pay. Just like when you do a buy it now with a best offer, if, if somebody accepts, somebody sends you a best offer, you accept, you have sent them an invoice, turns into the auction process, you have to wait like a couple days if they don't pay it right away. So I thought, Hmm, what am I going to price it? I probably could have gotten more for this because over in Europe, they were going for some pretty good money. This guy's great. I'm working with you. I don't care. Just just get rid of the stuff. I just, just sell the stuff. At this point, the stuff's not worth anything to me. Perfect client. Um, so I listed it here, $379.99. I got one best offer at $200. About 12 hours after I listed it, I thought, 200 bucks, that's good, quick flip, you know. I waited on it because what I've heard, and I don't know if it's true or not, when you have a buy it now with a best offer, somebody sends you an offer, you want to leave that offer out there for a while. I leave them out there for at least six, seven, eight, nine hours, something like 12 hours. Because I've heard, I don't know if this is true, that it bumps you up in search in eBay when there's an offer on it. I it's true. I have no idea. But every time I leave it sit out there, I always get somebody coming back with a higher offer. So I even messaged a guy like 10 hours later. I've got your offer. Let me think about it for a while. I won't forget about you. Two hours later, I get an offer for 350 Bingo. I'm writing the invoice. I'm actually, I'm actually helping a friend of mine do an advanced Amazon meetup. <laughs> I got dual screens going. I'm on the meetup. And I got a full screen up. I'm sending the guy the invoice. I'm like, great, man, thanks so much. Just pay, the quicker you pay, the faster I ship. And all of a sudden, stuff I have copied out to a Google document. And I'm writing this invoice. All of a sudden, I'm going, and my phone goes, ching, ching, ching. I'm going, what the heck? The guy ends up buying it for $379.99 outright. I don't blame him. Why lose it for $25? So he buys it. I pack it up. And I'll tell you a story about shipping this thing. I pack it up in this small box, maybe three inches on each side and everything. It was a nice box. It was in there pretty secure. <coughs> Excuse me. Going post office because it was a smaller box. Going to New York wasn't that bad. It was shipping was 
$18 with the insurance is man, you bet I'm gonna take insurance. And I do not do signature required on items anymore. I haven't done that in years. Why I don't do that is because sometimes people have to travel many miles to a post office if they miss the postman during the day. Either post office or FedEx. I've had people have to travel 10 miles to get an item. So I stopped doing that. I just insure anything over $100. So I pack it back in this little box, right? I'm, I, I got a pack, I print my label out, got it downstairs, it's gonna go up the next morning. And all night I just keep on waking up going, hmm, I really should double box that. I should double box that. So I got up the next morning, found another box, put that in that box, put some brown paper that I had from another item that I bought, which is great, in that box, use my box size or tool, trim down the box, and I double box it, canceled. That shipping label with the post office. Now the box is bigger. So I went into the post office again and they wanted $29 or something or $28 for the insurance. I thought, whoa, I'm making good money on this. I'm making like 100 and 150 bucks or 100 and whatever it is, 180 bucks or whatever I'm making on this. I'm like, okay, I'll need a couple of bucks for shipping. I thought, let me see what FedEx is. FedEx was like, $18 with the insurance, so boom, it went out FedEx, and he just got it Sunday. So he got it really quick. He bought it, I think, Thursday or Wednesday. Love, 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 love selling vintage stereo equipment. Love doing consignment to it. That was a really good sale for the week. Another scar box, again, not making a lot of money on this, and I don't know why these pictures are like this. Again, they're not showing up here, but... Um, Probably made about seven bucks. So what I do at the end of these listings is I try and do all the measurements at the end, which really um, helps the buyer out to know the measurements. A lot of times I get messages, what are the measurements? Well, you need to look at the last three pictures because it's even stated in the, oops, I usually have it in my description. It says the last three pictures of the measurements. So that wasn't that bad, that little sale. Another cigar box, same thing. Vacuum cleaner part, I bought two Dyson vacuum cleaners years ago at a garage sale. They were clogged. I could have unclogged them and just flipped them on Craigslist, but I thought, let me part them out. I've made hundreds of dollars off of these two vacuum cleaners. Um, all the expensive parts went real quick. This is obviously, it's a first class item. Put it in a poly envelope, wrap it in some paper, bubble wrap, throw it in a poly envelope, label it, or measure, measure, weigh it, label it. It's gone. Not a big dollar item. I made about seven dollars on that. Another item I got for free. I get a lot of free items from the thrift store across the street from the gas station. Get gas at. They have a couple of shopping carts, a couple of buggies out there during the day. Well, when they're open, nothing's open right now. Hopefully, it's will be open soon. Get fan blades there, ceiling fan blades, and sometimes I just pick pull things out. Got this. Not a big dollar item again. Made five dollars off of this. Went out first class. Took a while to sell, what they call a long tail sale. I think it was in my store for a couple of months. Uh, Commodore 64. <laughs> yeah, vintage computer games do sell. I saw a lot of GameCube stuff. I saw a lot of PlayStation 2 stuff. I've sold the, the control units. I don't play any of this stuff. A lot of old computer guys out there, people out there playing these old vintage games. You got any old computer monitors, color monitors, even uh, amber, green, look them up on eBay. You'll be shocked at what some of this stuff is going for. Back in my day, I did IT work back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, 80s and 90s. We had these IBM clicky keyboards you like that when you're working on them. Uh, look up those things. Just type in IBM clicky keyboard. If you ever see one at Goodwill or a thrift store or at a garage sale, grab it. Set 50, 75, 100 bucks all day long for those things. Back to this old computer game. I have no idea if it works. A friend of mine gave me a bunch of stuff from the storage unit. I was working with him for a while, and he decided to sell his own stuff, which was fine. Um, it was a great relationship. He said, keep anything under 100 bucks, which was wonderful. Tons of stuff I had and I sold that were 100 bucks, under 100 hours. Did not make a lot of money on this. Went out. First class, it does not go out media mail because it is a game. It is a, a game. It, you should not send out games via media mail. Count if you want, but I wouldn't do it. Uh, so I, I probably made like you know, $9 off of this. 
Uh, more games. Here we go. Here is the uh, GameCube games. Now, let me tell you a story about these. And I have no idea, and I rarely ever, this rarely ever happens to me, and it really annoys me when it does. Great, I sold these for $34.99. This is a, from a consignment client that I worked with years and years ago. Worked with her for about a year, then he just said, heck with it, I don't care, just keep everything. Cool, wonderful, you got it. This has been in my store since 2018. Yes, it's 2020. This is what they call a true long tail sale. So I get, I know exactly where these are. I pull them out of the box and I'm making sure I got every one of them. And okay, I got that one and I got that one and that one and that one. And I got that and that. Where's the, where's the Sims game? Oh no. Where's it at? I look and I look. And thankfully this happened Saturday, I sold it. So I have Saturday, Sunday, Monday to ship this out and I can't find it. And I'm looking and I'm looking, I'm going, okay, it was here. Is it in this box? Is it in that box? I still can't find it. So I messaged the guy, eBay message, you want keyboard communications via eBay messaging. I messaged the guy probably in a day, I think I messaged him last night. And I said, look, I cannot find this Sims game. I can either cancel the sale or I can just knock off five, six bucks because I'm not sending out the Sims game. He goes, that's okay. Thanks for being honest. Um, yeah, just do that. I really wanted the Tetra game, so I was supposed to take a lot for the Tetris. Great. So I, what I did today was I was able to fit all these into a padded flat rate envelope through the post office, which is seven fifty two. I think they cost. Would have cost me nine fifty if I didn't use a padded flat rate. I got it set up. I left it open. I put a label on it because it's a flat rate envelope and I can fit the one more game if I find it tonight, which I'll be honest with you, I don't think I'm even going to look for it at this point. I'll just discount them. I looked and looked and looked and I guarantee you what will happen. I will find this thing tomorrow. It'll be sitting right in front of me. <laughs> just what happens. But um, so there is money out there in this old stuff. Not a whole lot of money. But if you can get this stuff for free or under consignment or whatever, Thrifts were real, real cheap. There is money in the old games. These are not tested because I don't have any way to test them. So I did pretty good. I probably made about, well, minus, probably about $23 on that. Remotes, remotes, remotes. I can't stress how important it is to keep an eye out on remotes when you're at the thrift store, garage sales, or anywhere. Um, this is one of the many remotes I've sold. This is a high, this is a high dollar, this is what I consider a high dollar remote. Um, eighteen dollars. I usually get about nine ninety nine, maybe eleven ninety nine for a remote with free shipping. I don't pay any more than a dollar for a remote at a thrift store. Um, so here we go. Here's pictures. And I'll show you what I do. I even did a video on how I test them. Close up at the top, bottom, and back. I always take a picture of the back, uh, the back where the battery compartment is. As you can see, there is some. Um, battery uh, acid mark there. I should have cleaned that up. I forgot. Uh, I cleaned it up when I shipped it out yesterday or shipped it up. Packed it. It's sitting in my car. I'll drop it off tomorrow because nothing's open today or yesterday because it was Sunday and today's Memorial Day. Um, I always take a picture of the battery compartment empty. I ship these without the batteries to keep the, um, the weight down low. Uh, it is very important. What you're going to do here is this is a picture of the infrared light. Infra blue light, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. How you do that is you put batteries in it, obviously, press the buttons, put it, put your phone, show your phone on camera, and you're going to see the infrared. Um, I press all the buttons. Well, I try and press every single button. I may miss a button here or there, but um, that's how you test it. And you want to, I, I always make sure the last picture is the picture of the infrared thing on. Like I said, not a whole lot of money. I made about 14, maybe 13, 14 dollars off of this, but I think I got it for free. Somebody gave it to me. I found it. It was one of our piece of equipment, remotes. I don't even know. Two more items and then we're done. Uh, a puzzle that was sort of a consignment item and then they were like, eh, hey, just keep everything. Um, did well. Puzzles uh, sell well right now because people are at home. 
Um, they are, again, a long tail sale. I've had this out there for at least six months. These were very particular people. It was even in a Ziploc bag, the puzzles. Um, I had one person ask me, it was a puzzle of the skyline of New York City with the trade towers in it, and he asked me to count the pieces. It was a 700-piece puzzle, and it was going for $43. So I thought, oh, sure, I'll count them. So I did that for him, and they, they were all there, all the pieces. Um, did free shipping. I think this went to New Jersey, so I didn't make pretty good money on this. Again, this was not a consignment item at this point. This was mine. I, think I made about $15 on this. Now, I've sold other items. This is not all, all the items I've sold this week. This was a piece of a vacuum cleaner I got for free on Craigslist. I saw it out there. Well, you got to jump on this free stuff on Craigslist real quick. I got an email uh, alert via Craigslist. I set that up. I did a video on that, I think. I'll check back some of those videos I did. Got this message a person. She went, yep, it's still here. We got it. I said, I'll take it. It was about a mile away. Drove over there, got it. And she was, do you want this uh, caddy thing too? I went, yeah, sure. The short vacuum parts sell pretty good. Um, they're a little tricky to take apart there. I, I'll tell you, I don't get anything for this, but um, it's a pretty good vacuum cleaner sharks. They're built pretty darn well. Um, I have some tips about you might need to use a Torx wrench on some of the uh, bolts and stuff to, or some of the screws. They're really weird. There's Phillips screws and then there's one or two Torx wrench screws. I guess for security, it's a security Torx wrench too on there. Uh, $29.99 was listed for about two days. I sold it last night. I went, great. Out oh, to California again. <laughs> great. Made $9 on this, which was fine. It didn't cost me anything. It was a free thing on Craigslist. I was hoping to make a little bit more than $9 on this. Well, believe it or not, that is it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. And again, please like it. Um, and uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm always trying to give you guys tips and tricks and everything else. You guys have a great week, and I'll uh, catch you next week on what I sold this week. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.